In exercise 3-16, we are required to prepare financial statements from an adjusted trial balance. So at December 31st, 2024, we have the adjusted trial balance for a company. They've given us all the account names and asked us to prepare the income statement, statement of owner's equity, and a classified balance sheet. So let's start with the income statement, see what goes in over there. In the income statement, we have revenues and expenses for a period. The difference between total revenues and total expenses will give us net income. We always start a financial statement with the name of the company. Second line, you'll identify which statement it is. In this case, it's the income statement. And the income statement is always for a period. So this is for the year ended December 31st, 2024. Then let's see what the statement of stockholders equity looks like. Again, you'll have the name of the company, name of the statement, which is statement of stockholders equity. And this is also for the period, for a period. So this is for the year ended December 31st, 2024. It'll be the same as the income statement. Stockholders equity has two accounts, common stock and retained earnings. Unless you're a brand new company, you will have a beginning balance. So you will have a beginning balance that'll be in the adjusted trial balance. We'll take the numbers from there, but we'll do that in a minute. Next, you will add any new stock that was issued during the year. You'll be given information if that's happened. In this case, nothing has been told about any additional information. So it's zero, but I'm just showing you this information where it would go in. Then you would add any the net income from the previous statement, that's the income statement. So whatever you have the net income there, that number comes down over here. And finally, if dividends are paid, you will write less dividends. And that dividends you will find over here in the adjusted trial balance if the dividends were paid. If not, there's nothing there. And that will give you the ending balance. Now with that, let's look at the third statement. The third statement is a balance sheet. Again, name of the company, balance sheet. And the balance sheet is always as of a particular date. Balance is on a particular date. So that's December 31st, 2024. We have assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Now, what you will see is two other classifications over here. Under assets, we have current assets and long-term assets. Under liabilities, same thing, you will have current liability and long-term liability. So this is basically, we will be looking at a time period of one year, anything that converts into cash or we're gonna get the benefit out of it within the next one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer, is classified or grouped as current assets. We will list them in the order of liquidity, which means nearness to cash, how quickly it can convert into cash. Then you have your long-term assets. These assets are productive assets. They will help you generate revenues. We don't expect to sell them within the next one year. We expect to keep it. Our intention is to keep it beyond one year. Current liabilities, long-term liabilities, same idea. Long-term liabilities, I owe the money after one year. So when I'm preparing my financial statement on December 31st, Whatever is listed in long-term liability is not due in the next 12 months. It's beyond the 12-month period. Current liabilities are due in less than 12 months. Stockholders' equity will have only two accounts. The two accounts you will see are common stock and retained earnings. And those will be the ending balances that you have over here. Those are the numbers that are going to show up over here. So common stock and ending balance. Uh, common stock and retained earnings. The ending balance that we have over here, that's what's going to come over here. These two numbers that you see here, they'll be the ending balance from here. So as you see, these three statements are connected. I have to prepare the income statement in order to complete the statement of stockholders' equity. I have to complete this in order to prepare the balance sheet. So with that, let's get back to our trial balance and see how we'll work our way through with this. There are many different ways in which you can work through with this. What I would suggest is first go through the account names. In most cases, the adjusted trial balance, the accounts will be organized. 
in the order of assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenues, and expense. In most cases, that's how you would see it. So let's just quickly eyeball and see what these accounts are. So yes, the first one I see over here is assets. This is an asset cash. Accounts receivable is an asset. Prepaid rent is an asset. asset. Supplies is an asset. Land is also an asset. Now further what I will say is, of this group of assets, let me highlight them here for a second. Of these assets, land is the only one that I'm going to keep for more than one year. Everything else is going to be converted to cash in less than one year. Used up or converted to cash in less than one year. So what we can do is we can go ahead and transfer all this information over here into our balance sheet. Cash, receivables, prepaid rent, and supplies are current assets. So we will list those accounts over here. And we will list, we will list land as a long-term asset. Now what you will see over here is if I have more than one account in a category, I put them in the inside column, and then I take the total to the outside column. This is just so that visually you can see it better. Long-term assets, I have only one long-term asset, so I can put that directly over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you this presentation. Well, no, actually I did put it in the inside and put it in the outside column. Otherwise you could just directly put it in the outside column if there's only one item. So total current assets plus total long-term assets has given me $463,000. You don't need to do the totals, just Make sure you put the accounts properly. Okay, let's come back over here. Then we have accounts payable, salaries payable, interest payable, notes payable. These are all liabilities. These are all liabilities. Now, these liabilities, the liabilities that you see over here, accounts payable, I most certainly hope that I can pay my vendors within the next one year, otherwise they're not gonna do business with me. Same thing, salaries payable, I probably am gonna pay it within the next two weeks, not, not gonna wait longer than that. Interest payable also happens within the year. Notes payable, they've specified and told me it's due in two years. So I have three current liabilities, and one long-term liability. So I will put that information over here. I have three current liabilities and one long-term liability. My three current liabilities add up to 28,000. My long-term liability is 40, giving me a total of 68,000. Remember, total assets have to equal to total liability plus owner's equity. Well, owner's equity, I can't put that information because I need to work my way through. So let's continue over here. The next, I have common stock and retained earnings. These are my equity accounts. This is my equity account, these two, common stock and retained earnings. So moving on and just choosing a different color. Common stock and retained earnings. Those are your beginning balances over here. Common stock and retained earnings. The beginning balances are 360. So this 360 that you see over here, those numbers are brought in over here as beginning balances. For a total equity of 360, that's again just the beginning balance that we have. Then we have service revenue of $500,000. There's only one item of service revenue. So that information goes up over here under revenues, service revenue, and I'm not gonna bother writing total revenues because there was only one item. And then after that, I have salaries expense. So let me just put that down here. I have rent expense depreciation expense, and interest expense. Now these four items go in the, these four items go in the income statement under expenses. 
Again, you will put them in the inside column simply because there are multiple account names. Write all of them down here. And in the outside column, I write total expenses. So I have revenues 500. I have my expenses at 465. That leaves me with a net income. This number is a calculated number. My net income number is 35,000. Can't seem to recall which colors I've used here, but there I found it. My net income is 35,000. That's where I bring that number down. That net income number has to come down over here. Now I have taken care of all the numbers that were here in the adjusted trial balance. There was no additional information given to me, which means there was no additional common stock. Now you will not do anything you will not even have this item even you're doing it on your assignment in Connect. But I'm just showing you over here, if you had any common stock issued, this is where it would be listed, but it's at zero. We have just going horizontally, adding up, and this is obviously zero. There's nothing over here, it's 35,000. There was nothing about dividends. Dividends would have been paid out of retained earnings, but that's zero. We didn't pay any dividends to our stockholders. Okay, now let's do this. Common stock, we started with 300,000. We end with 300,000. I didn't issue any new common stock. My retained earnings, I start with 60. I add 35 in net income on the current year. That gives me 95. I didn't pay out anything in dividends. So I ended the year with 95. And we add across and say, I have 395,000. Now again, remember, my, my equity ending balance, these numbers have to come here. Oops. Give me a second here. I need to put them in the inside column. Common stock and retained earnings, the ending balances. Give me total equity. And that's what I put in the outside column. The 395, that's the total equity. That number comes here in the outside column. Let me highlight it over here so that you know it's the exact same number that you're looking at. Finally, what I will do is I'll say, remember, total assets, I'm going to put this these in a different color so we can just visually see this here. Total assets was 463. My total liabilities was 68. Total equity is 395. Total assets must equal to total liabilities plus owner's equity. So that's the final thing that we're looking at over here. And yes, it is the same number. So again, let me just highlight so you can see this, what we're looking at. I'm running out of colors here, but I'll find one. Okay, there we go. Again, remember in the balance sheet, total assets must be equal to total liabilities plus owner's equity. And that's what we have. Your total assets are equal to total liability and owner's equity. So once again, in the income statement, we have revenues and expenses for the current period. This is for the year ended December 31st, 2024. The net income from here goes down into the stockholder's equity. Stockholders equity section has two accounts, common stock and retained earnings. You have a beginning balance, unless it's a brand new company, beginning balance will be zero. If the company issued more stock, you will add it to this column for stock. The net income from the income statement, you put that under retained earnings, it add, goes into retained earnings. If dividends were paid, it comes out of retained earnings. In this case, nothing was paid out. Retained earnings, and your common stock, the ending balance goes into your balance sheet.
in the balance sheet, we have assets, liabilities, and owner's equity as of a particular date. So we have the date December 31st, 2024. Your assets and liabilities are grouped into two group uh, subgroups, current assets and long-term assets, current liability and long-term liability. And you're typically looking at the one-year time frame. Current assets are those assets that will convert into cash or you will get the use out of it within the next one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. If not, it becomes a long-term life asset. So here I have some tips on what you should note for each of these statements. These are from your textbook. So you can look at your textbook or you can come back and refer to these notes and go over this before you finish this exercise. So with this, I'll get started with the next exercise.